No? <laughs> That's funny. Not really. Hi, and welcome back to Real to Real. So today, right now, we have director, producer, writer, Mike Pavone joining us tonight. And nice. actor. Sorry. Oh, and actor. And actor. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thanks for helping. You. He does all the things. Yeah. Right. Oh. Well, when you get old enough, you have a lot of time to do stuff. So that's really more of a, a factor of my age than anything else. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Mike, you've done so many, you know, works uh, in your career. Is there anything that, like, uh, you enjoyed the most? Between writing, of? producing, directing, yeah. that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess I actually like acting the most. That's oh. the original reason I went down to Los Angeles. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in their program for two years. Um, and then after that, uh, when I started as a writer, they're very different things, writing and directing and producing. Writing is a very solitary thing in a room by yourself, so I enjoy that for what it is, creating a project from the start, facing the blank page, the challenge of that. And you know, as all writers say, nobody in Hollywood goes to work unless I sit down and face a blank page, so it has to come yeah, from yeah. there. Directing is very different, it's very high maintenance. Yeah. You ask, you know, you're, you're responsible for the entire vision of a show. You're answering to many people, thousands of questions a day. It's very intense. Um, so there's nothing relaxing about that. Writing at home can be relaxing. And then last of all, producing, being sort of the overseer in charge of a whole production, budget-wise, managing, you know, the employees and the different kinds of personalities. That's its own kind of thing, too. But if I had to pick one, I, I guess I get the purest enjoyment out of acting. So acting, are there, are there any like specific shows that you've been on that you really enjoyed being on? Well, because I was primarily a showrunner, mm -hmm. writing and producing television series, uh, I didn't get a lot of time to act, but there were a couple opportunities. I, I acted on two television shows. One was called Any Day Now on the Lifetime Network. I was on there for five years. Wow, that's a long and time. And then I played Holly Hunter's brother on a TNT show called Amazing Grace. And the rest of the time, I really didn't have time to act because I was more involved in writing and creating television shows. Wow. Speaking of writing and creating, um, we did some research about you, and... Um, oh, oh, that's too bad. Yep. Oh. <laughs> we actually uh, heard about your WWE stint. How did that go? The WWE turned out to be one of the best jobs I ever had. Oh, it, wow. it wasn't Have you me. ever watched it? Oh, no, <laughs> I just have a friend. Who's You're a fan, a fan though, I can I'm, tell. I'm a fan, I'm a fan. And who is your favorite WWE star? Ooh, I got a lot, but I like Batista. You know, that big guy that, you know, yeah. the big... You Let know, me tell you, like Batista is a very strange and in interesting individual. He actually has a collection of lunch boxes. Oh. That is cool. It's cool <laughs> and very weird in a lot of ways. Little kid lunch boxes. And he's 35 years old and weighs 280 pounds. Wait, so he collects like he's lunch a collector boxes with the lunch thermos. boxes. That's, lunch boxes. That's so. cool. Yeah. Oh my goodness. They're actually all pretty good guys, and they're real professionals. And it was one of the most professional experiences I've had. They're great entertainers, great athletes, mm -hmm. and really quick studies. I got a quick question about WWE. Do you guys like have rehearsals on how you guys punch? Because when I see you guys punch, it's always like. Well, when Whoa. you say you guys, of course you're not referring no, to me. No, not you. Yeah, 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 of course. I had nothing right. to do with that. The yeah, they're rehearsed. They're well trained. They go to a special school. Uh -huh. And I always tell people when I choreograph a fight scene as a director in a film, I have different camera angles. Mm -hmm. I have editing. I have special effects. I have multiple takes. These guys do those fight scenes in the middle of a theater of 17,000 screaming people, and from every angle somebody's watching them, and they do the stunts perfectly and make it look real under those conditions. No take two, it's all shot live. Oh. And people say, well, yeah. how do they accomplish that? And I go, well, they actually beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they get hurt all the time because they have to be so much better than a professional stuntman oh, to make yeah. it look that real. How did that go? The WWE turned out to be one of the best jobs I ever had. Oh, it, wow. it wasn't a job I wanted, and it was a job I took a lot of heat for. It mm -hmm. came during a writer's strike when there was oh, no work, yes. and I had bills to pay. Yeah. And uh, the head of the USA Network, Jeff Wattell, was a friend, and he called me up, and it was their biggest show mm -hmm. on USA. And he said, would you go over there as a consultant and just help with the writing staff, which I did, and that turned out to be uh, a year on the road producing live television mm -hmm. and directing. Mm -hmm which turned out to be great fun, loved the people. And then Vince McMahon, the head of the company, asked me to run their film division. Wow. And in three years, I was tasked with making nine family films, 
uh, six of which I shot in New Orleans, one in Albuquerque, and a couple in Toronto. And it, it really was a terrific experience. Any advice for people, you know, to make it bigger in, as a producer and a director for, like, TV shows? Or, or just you know, in any aspect of, like, the industry. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The thing is, you got to get to L.A., because that's where the work is. If your heart is really in this and, and you want to make this a career, you have to get down there. You're getting some great training here at the school. And uh, once you're comfortable, you got to move down to where the work is. Mm -hmm. It's difficult in the Bay Area unless you want to yeah. stay in marketing yeah. or commercials. Yeah. But uh, everything's done out of L.A. and starts out. So the opportunity is there. you got to get yourself down there. Mm -hmm. Cool, right. cool. So what are like your current projects you have going on? <laughs> The current projects I have going on is uh, I'm trying to use some students in Santa Rosa to shoot a feature film for free oh. with all local talent from the local community theater where they have some wonderful actors. Before anything else, like from acting, from directing, from producing, from anything like that, how, how did you break into the industry, just in general? Like, how did you start? I got a degree in film, mm -hmm. just like you guys. I pursued it when I went to college. Back then, we didn't have the technology you do now, so it was a lot tougher to get your work out there in the world. Mm -hmm. So you guys have a lot of opportunities we didn't. But I went and uh, finally got a job after a year of struggling to find work and driving a forklift. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting a job for the government making top-secret films in the aerospace industry. And it turned Ooh. out to be a great place to learn how to do your craft the hard way, but it yeah. was very valuable for me. Mike, it was such an honor to talk to you, and you know, yeah. after this, we'll probably take selfies with you. Yeah. <laughs> but right now, we are actually the dreaded selfies. <laughs> <laughs> right now, we're gonna talk to the founder of Soon We Fall, the metalcore band. And so, I'm Julian Thomas. I'm Chris Mitra, and we'll see you after the break. Yeah.